Hello everybody and welcome back to 3DF. My name is Xander and today we're going to follow up our episode from last week on the 20mm calibration cube by talking about hollow calibration cubes. But before we get started, if you missed the last video, just check up here, should be a link. And for all the print files that you'll see over the course of this series, you'll be able to find down below in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's go out to Xander for the news. Thank you, Other Xander. Stay frosty. So, as Other Xander said, today we're going to be talking about the hollow cube calibration, which is this guy right here. As you can see, it's got a nice hollow cavity, some 2 mil walls, 25 mil overall, all the way around. So let's talk about what we're going to learn from this cube. Looking straight down the center, you can see that we have this crosshack section here, so we cut away so you can see what we're looking at. And what we are really focusing on are these two millimeter walls, which need to be plus or minus 0.1 millimeter. If you are larger, you are over extruding. If you are smaller, then you are under extruding. If the thickness is good, uh, but the X or Y is too big or too small on the outer side, that means that your stepper motor calibration is out in your X and Y, and you can go back and check our last video on the 20 millimeter cube, which would be somewhere up here, and find out all the details for that. Uh, if the overall height or the, or the internal height, so this section here, is too small uh, or too big, then we need to calibrate your Z axis, which is actually done the same way as we explained in the 20 millimeter cube. Somewhere up here. So in our last episode, we covered measuring the outside. This time, we're gonna focus on measuring the inside. So you can see that we have these two top blades here. They're designed for inside measuring. So we're just gonna clean those off with our thumb, just like we learned last week. Just be careful, they can be sharp. And we're gonna close it up a bit and come on in. And this time, we're gonna pull with our thumb that way instead of pushing in this way like we did last time. And the real trick is to try and get it as parallel as possible. So as you can see there, just twisting it back and forth until I feel the blades kind of grab, we're looking at about 20.93, so that's not too bad. Now, the final and cool thing you can do with a Werner is if you flip it over and look at the back, there is a rod sticking out. The further you go, whoop, the further the rod sticks out, whoop. So, when measuring with the bottom of a vernier, you want to make sure that your sho shoulders are planted very firmly on the piece. And we're going to go on down here and measure. So we're looking at about 23.05. That's pretty good. So those are the final two uses for a vernier. Back to you, Xander. Thank you, other Xander, for that wonderful explanation on how to measure with a vernier. Now, back to the main event. So you're under extruding or over extruding, or maybe it's perfect. And if it's perfect, just skip right to the joke at the end of the video. We always have those, so enjoy. But for the rest of you, you are over or under extruding. So we're gonna do a secondary test. We're gonna find out how much, and then we're gonna fix it. So if we measure and mark 100 millimeters and 110 millimeters from the idler arm, pictured here. If you have direct drive, sometimes this can be buried into the assembly a bit, but it should be the point of which your filament enters the actual extrusion system of your machine. So we're going to take our vernier again. Using that same top measuring arms, we're going to put it right on the idler and we're going to measure out to 100 millimeters. We'll call that there. And you're just going to mark that. Then you're going to take it again and you're going to measure out to 110 millimeters. And we're going to take that measurement as well. Now, once you're done measuring all that, we're going to advance the extruder 100 millimeters. So we're going to infeed our filament, and then we're going to take our vernier and measure the remaining length. Always repeat this test three times. It takes you almost no time to do. Now, we have too much going on on this board to finish the equation, so... Ah, that's better. So we've advanced our extruder and we've taken our three measurements. We found that the average was 9.5. So the first thing we got to do is figure out the actual movement. So we're going to take our 110, which was our maximum potential length, minus 9.5. 
and we're gonna get a nice round 100.5 there. Now, typically you're not gonna see it out too much. So these are pretty realistic numbers. Then we need to figure out the ratio. So we're gonna take our 100 uh, millimeters that we asked it to move, and we're gonna divide it by the 100.5 millimeters that it did move, and we're gonna get a number like 0.995. And then finally, after getting our current steps per millimeter out of our controller, we're gonna take that number, which for me was 93.8, multiply it by the 0.995, and you will get a number like 93.3, and you're gonna go type that into your controller, uh, and that should fix the problem. As always, do double check it, run another test of the 100 millimeters, make sure that you're getting what you want, and second of all, always write this number down in case you have to change it back or you change the wrong thing. I don't know how many of you keen eyes were watching there when I did the little but when I walked away, I pulled the camera down, which kind of killed the whole effect. So I got a good laugh. I hope you get a good laugh at that. I know it's not as animated as my typical jokes, but for any of you who are actually following this series, we have a much better cut gag right here. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Happy between Canadian and American Thanksgiving, everybody.